let's kick things off. Um, so uh, thanks to everybody for coming on this afternoon, especially as I had to rearrange the meeting due to holidays. Um, so the agenda for today, um, just share these slides. Okay, so hopefully you can see those. So agenda for today is a quick progress update on uh, what we've been doing since the last community group call. Um, and then I wanted to focus on one area of the spec that's being changed for um, the 2.0 release, which is um, adding some specific subtypes of event to capture a bit, add a bit more nuance about how um, publishers can provide a bit of context around some of the information we're publishing. So we'll get into that in a moment. Um, and then any, OB, any other business that people want to raise uh, before the end of the call. Um, so in terms of uh, progress, um, we've got a, a number of uh, activities going on in parallel at the moment. Um, revisions to both the data model spec, the booking, uh, the draft booking spec, and some of our developer tools uh, and documentation. So where are we with all that? Um, we had a good discussion around the booking spec, um, the, it was the last call, um, which flags uh, a few issues with the current draft, just um, largely with um, how the JSON-LD responses were structured. Um, it wasn't ideal the way that we had um, some of the URL discovery uh, in place um, and we hadn't added um, support for communicating terms of services as, as well as privacy policy. So we've taken that on board, um, reviewed it in the team and we have some change, we've got some um, changes to publish. They're not quite ready yet. I, I had hoped to have them ready for today so we could have just quickly summarised them but um, with holidays uh, and other commitments. We haven't quite got the draft ready for publication. So I'm hoping that will go out in the next couple of days um, and that will keep us on track for getting, the, mainly on track for getting the 1.0 release done. Um, alongside of doing the changes to the draft spec, um, Chris, who's leading that piece of work, has also been working on a reference implementation and he's found that useful to highlight a few error conditions that also needed to be uh, flagged a bit more clearly in the spec as well. So that's moving on with perhaps a, a few days behind on where I'd hope to be, but broadly on track um, and had positive feedback from everyone so far. Um, we've also been, um, uh, as I mentioned in the last few calls, working on a data validator, um, which is, you can see a version of that at validator.openactive.io. Um, the work on that is largely done. We have a validator that covers the, uh, the data model, um, or at least the draft 2.0 data model, to be clear, and also a validator that uh, provides feedback on implementation of the RPDE feed spec. So those are largely done, pending either any other feedback on user interface from the community um, or final changes to the 2.0 specification. Um, so some of the things I'm going to talk about in a minute, the, the, the new types of event aren't yet in the validator, but I'm hoping those will go in uh, fairly shortly. Um, but that's, that validation tool is already proving useful in order to um, help explore the 2.0 changes, but also support um, some of the new publishers that have been coming on stream. Um, we've also got a new developer site, which will have a bit more uh, a bit more documentation for developers who are um, not just uh, publishing data, but also using data. I've, we've um, written a few tutorials which will be going out over the next few weeks as well. So there'll be a whole kind of drop of uh, documentation tools and updated specs coming um, in, in the next couple of weeks. Um, probably the bulk of the work has been the um, changes to the data model. Um, the, the, the main focus for the 2.0 spec was, was intending to be the 
um, changes to improve the quality of published data. So tightening up um, some of the uh, uh, areas in spec that talk about what, what constitutes valid data, limit some of the options around um, how data is published in order to add more consistency. Um, there were a few other things that I'd hoped to try and get into the 2.0 spec, including the, the roots proposal that we had a discussion uh, on um, a couple of calls ago. But um, given that there was quite a bit of feedback for, on the roots work, I'm going, I decided to push that out um, from the 2.0 release. So it will be probably in the 2.1 um, proposal, depending on any uh, further iteration. It's not that it's a particularly complex set of feedback, it's just on top of all the other changes that are going to be in the 2.0 release. It felt like uh, a bit too much to try and rush that through as well. So we're going to be leaving discussion and feedback open on that um, for a few more weeks yet. Um, there is a working draft of the 2.0 spec available. Um, there's a bitly link there if you want to uh, jump into it now but I'll be circulating a link to that to the list uh, later today. So that's just a separate um, editor's draft 2.0, which has the majority of the changes in it. There's a few, um, there's a couple of bits that aren't in that draft yet. Um, the main piece being um, some more uh, documentation around how scheduled events are published and how those can be um, uh, those schedules can be processed to create um, individual kind of calendar entries effectively for each of the, the events that's described in that series. Um, but the bulk of the changes around the validation rules that are all in there um, and the, the initial content for what I'm just about to run through around types of event is also there as well. Um, once I get that updated draft done, published this afternoon, um, I want to give everyone two weeks for feedback on that draft so that we can formally publish 2.0 on, on or around the 13th of September. So we've got a call on the 12th of September, um, which I want to use to just quickly step through any, uh, any feedback we get, any proposed changes and get those into the specification. So that's two weeks from today. Um, to support publishers in upgrading, because there are a number of changes, we're going to provide some upgrade advice. Um, we're going to use the validation tool to do that. Um, so we'll be able to generate validation reports um, and link people to do those so that they can see uh, where their feed might be invalid according to the 2.0 spec um, and you know, help people work through the process of upgrading so we can try and get everyone aligned on the, the latest edition as, um, as quickly as possible. Um, so that's where we are in terms of progress. Um, any uh, questions on that before I move on to the discussion about event types? Just speak up if you've got anything. I'm going to take that as a no, but feel free to jump in at, at any point. Okay, um, so one of the main um, proposals, um, both changes in, in 2.0 outside of the validation rules, was, add, it was been to add some um, new types of event. So in 1.0, 1.1, we've been um, only using the um, schema.org uh, event type. I'll just bring up the definition here whilst I'm talking. Um, so this, we're just using their existing definition of an event. Um, it, it's uh, very broadly defined, covers all different types of events. So full, uh, you know, whole day events, multi-day events, you know, short uh, gym sessions, uh, really anything, anything that ha takes place at a time, a specific time at a specific location. Um, over the, over the, the course of the last, I guess, year or so, if longer, when people have been publishing data, um, we've got a bit more insight into the types of event that are useful, um, uh, the, types of, the types of opportunity that people are publishing data event about uh, as part of Open Active. Um, so 
based on that, we want to add some more detail into the specification to give a bit more guidance around how to publish uh, specific types of um, information. So there are um, broadly three, um, three types of event that we've kind of noticed appearing as patterns in data. There's the kind of archetypal kind of weekly gym class where you have you know a class that you know weekly gym class weekly yoga class for example that will run every wednesday um and then there will be specific instances of that class specific sessions that will be taking place so today at 6 p.m next week at 6 p.m etc so that's one type of um uh, event we might want to distinguish between another type of event is where we have um big kind of headline events, competitions, mass participation events, where there's like a, like a full day, but that day is broken up into a program of events. Um, so individual things that would be races or competitions or matches that will be taking place over the course of the day. Uh, and that's another kind of a pattern that we want to recognize. Um, and then the third one is courses. So where you want, you might have, let's say a 10 week sailing course, um, and then there will be 10 individual events that people will be expected to turn up to. So those are the use cases. Um, so uh, broadly, the first one is about um, uh, a schedule and the individual sessions that are part of that schedule. The second case where we've got the headline event is about having an event which is made up of kind of what we could think of as component parts. So individual uh, events in the program um, uh, and then courses and the individual classes so it, in each of these cases it would be useful to be able to distinguish between these different types of an event in the published data rather than using the generic type um, because that means that a data consumer might choose to display that information differently so if you're publishing information about say a uh, a mass participation event or a kind of whole day event you might want to have a page that has information about that whole event uh, and then detail on its its program to give people a sort of flavor of what's happening over the course of the day whereas with a gym class you just want to say this happens every wednesday the next one is today at 6 p.m <clears throat> there's some different so by adding some uh, information around those it becomes easier for consumers to distinguish between them um, there was also uh, what we've noticed is um, particularly in the case of uh, where people are publishing data about gym classes that it's often useful to be able to publish an event with a schedule um, which has all of the, the key information about the event so who where it is what um, who's organizing it how much it costs to take part and that information is consistent across all of the individual instances you know the only thing that really changes in the instances is what day or time it's running on everything else is the same so it's useful to be able to inherit all of that information uh, from the kind of main uh, the main sh uh, kind of schedule with the individual instance so um, we've been calling that kind of uh, property inheritance so how does a child event so this afternoon's yoga class uh, inherit that information from the kind of broader scheduled event so we needed to make sure that we got some clarity around what, how that might work in the specification so that consumers can consistently process this information so um yeah on the slide there i'll just give the same example um so a gym class um, is going to share almost all the same information across all of those Thursday 6 p.m. sessions but uh, a race in a multi-day event uh, might not it might be at a different location uh, it might have different people associated with it it might be suitable for different types of participants so there is some uh, differences there uh, Lee quick question um, mm -hmm. is this the same way that it would work where you for example uh, a leisure center with multiple um, uh, sites, uh, sorry, not sorry, leisure operator with multiple sites would then um, uh, may, might have the same types of clusters running across multiple sites just at different times and days, or is this a slightly different use case? Um, 
That's a good question. So I think in that case, I, I would think of those as a um, different sets of events. Um, but there is, there is a, there might well be, there might be grouped in some way. One way we've kind of defined to, to kind of group these things that are in the existing spec is through the program property. So if they're for like the same brand, so if it's a, um, so Nick will probably have a good example, but a kind of let's ride event or, yeah, uh, breeze, uh, breeze cycling, which is a women's, uh, event, which, uh, sorry, we a particular brand of cycling for women, which uh, will have a trained instructor that understands um, what's, what, what they need to know to be a good coach in that context. Uh, and so if you go on a Let's Ride event, you can be guaranteed that you will have a certain type of experience. Um, although I think that might be a slightly different question to the grouping of the events. And I, I don't know if you're going to come to this, Lily, but we did... There's this other thing um, which is in spec called event series, um, which um, basically is if you have a Zumba class running across 20 sites, you can say they're all part of the same event series and therefore you can reference that once uh, and not need to kind of duplicate that information. Um, if, if it's more important to you that it's Zumba rather than the detail underneath it of what site and what date and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, we, we, we thought about that a bit later actually, cause we, we thought about the other stuff first and then we kind of suddenly realized that actually at slightly higher level, um, there's a bit of a, like you say, a, sometimes you just care about the, the headline, well, not the headline, it's something else. You just care about the, um, kind of what is it rather than the detail. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, we could maybe look at uh, an example of that uh, afterwards. Um, Sorry, I, I've got a quick question as well. Um, sure. Hopefully, quick. Um, is there going to be a limit on the group on the amount of events or sub events within a group as well? Because I'm just thinking in terms of, say, if we were offering uh, walking or running or cycling uh, along towpaths, that sort of thing. Potentially, we can offer that every day of, of the year. Now we we can break it down by geographically, so into regions and things like that. Uh, which would work, but there's still going to be a hell of a lot of potentially you know, data that goes in there, unless uh, that maybe that event series that Nick's just alluded to will will solve it. But it's just something I I think needs to be thought about is that we could potentially have lots of sort of sub events in there. When you say um, just to dig into that example um, quickly, when you say uh, every day walking event, um, where would those events kind of come from is that is it kind of is it, is it because you can turn up on any day and so therefore every day yes. is yeah so so for example you can go running any day on the towpath or cycling uh, or walking if, if you wanted to so they're all potential event events that i've got some quibbles around you know the definition maybe of the event but potentially they could all be listed there every day so we could auto generate those into the feed oh i see so one of the i guess one of the principles of the feeds is that the uh, type of auto generation uh, we're talking about there basically we we tend to dissuade that um, from being a thing mainly because if we're auto generating information it's usually coming from a kind of more um, concise source so in that case it would be you know you can walk any day on this towpath um, and I mean for that for taking a more general example um, when there's an event schedule where it could be you know every other hour for the for the next three weeks or the next two years and there's a recommendation to kind of use the schedule itself in the data so rather than saying literally monday tuesday wednesday you just say every day of the week and then you publish that just once um because almost that's the level of information that you have rather than generating additional data which is kind of you know implied by it but is not kind of concrete if you like so that would be down, if you use that every day of the week, it's down to the consuming developer to sort of get that and then uh, offer that on a, on a regular basis if they were going to in their feed. Yeah, it's to present it to the user exactly in a way that, me, that would, would make it look like it's, it's regular. I mean, for the particular example of walking, um, I, we kind of talked about routes a bit before, but mm. that would probably be more of a self-directed activity where you may publish the route and say it's available anytime or these are the opening hours of the, space if there were opening hours of that um so rather than kind of I, this is where kind of teasing out the different types of sessions is interesting yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah I think I, I, for me, it feels like there's uh, what we've got in the spec at the moment is we've got um, of events that, that will either occur at a set schedule or, or go planned to take place at a specific time and date. You've got um, we've got facility use, which is basically an, uh, an opportunity to use a facility at specific times. It may be that the facility doesn't actually get used for some of those slots. You know, so there is a kind of an element of kind of on demand there, but there's a specific time and place you can use that facility. And then there's the kind of on demand use case. And at the moment, there isn't really anything in spec that talks about um, on demand uh, stuff. In 1.0, uh, actually, I think most of been 1.1, there was this kind of, we had this very vague definition of a activity opportunity, which was kind of like an event, but wasn't really taking place at a time, at a specific time but it wasn't really well defined. And actually all of the examples that, that we had that might have fit into that use case were things like walking routes, biking routes, um, running routes. So that's why we've, we've kind of morphed that bit into the, the routes proposal. And I think that's probably the, the first example of a kind of on-demand activity. Um, the other example that is kind of floating around in discussion is this idea of virtual events of which there are I think three or four different kind of categories that people have been exploring. So I think we'll, we're going to get more into these kind of on-demand things, but I think they're slightly different to a kind of the event model. Um, okay, so so the, so those are the kind of the, the kind of requirements. So we've seen specific patterns in the data. We want to make sure that uh, they that those patterns are uh, consistently uh, displayed and interpreted by, by consumers. So there is a um, uh, uh, some text now in the draft specification uh, and that there's a spreadsheet I'm just going to walk through in a minute that talks about what those different type different event types are. Um, so we're going to be basically defining uh, three new types uh, and recommending use of a um, a pending type in schema.org to cover these different use cases. Um, so we're broadly calling these schedule events, headline events, and courses. Um, I'm going to switch to a spreadsheet now, which I don't know that one, this one, um, that will hopefully kind of provide uh, some a useful overview of this. Can, can you read this okay through the screen share? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to step through these kind of five examples just to kind of show where that where the new event types kind of come in so we've got um you know the very simplest case is uh, a single one-off event you know it's just uh, somebody arranges a fun run uh, or just a one-off activity that goes into a feed right so that would be uh, described as an event using the existing schema.org type it's not it doesn't recur um it's just a, a one-off thing um, there are also events which are part of a uh, regular meetup. I've called them group events here. The example was uh, from Let's Ride. So where you've got a group of people that are going to get together on a regular, semi-regular basis, take part in some activity in this, in this example. Um, it may be that it is kind of uh, a kind of regular schedule, but... Um, it's not necessarily consistent. So again, these would just be described as, as events. Um, um, the way that you would build a calendar of upcoming events for that group is by just looking at what future events that group has um, plans to do. So you can look through the data that's in their feed and group it by, um, by that meetup. So that kind of those cases won't, won't change. Um, the, the, the main one that will be different is where we have uh, these uh, daily, weekly, monthly scheduled classes. So what I call the, re the regular class use case uh, with the example being a weekly yoga session. We, we're defining two new types here. Um, we'll have a, an event type called um, session series. Um, which will be the type that, we, that will hold the schedule. Uh, I'll show example what it looks like in a moment. Um, and then, so that's 
weekly yoga on Thursday, and then the sub event um, is the next comments here. I'll just get rid of those because they're in the way. Um, <laughs> there were no changes then; it was just notes. Uh, the then the um, a scheduled session would be the event that is happening today at six p.m. So it's a specific instance of it. Um, so that means that um, a data consumer can distinguish between these two things more reliably. They're distinct from the normal event type, and we can distinguish between the schedule and the, the instance of it. Okay. Um, what, um, I'll come back to the inheritance of, uh, of offers. Um, so the next example is um, um, a, a mass participation event. The example here is the, the big Southeast Aquathon. Um, it's a, a one day event. There are a number of races that take place within that event. So what we're proposing is here for the kind of main, what was called a headline event, there's a new type. So the, the big Southeast Aquathon would be a headline event. The individual races over the day would be just described as events, just a generic events. Um, because it might be a race, it might be a, um, a taught course, it might you know, it could be a, a number of different things that appear in the program. And the reason why we're kind of defining the type for the, the kind of uh, the headline event is because that's where it would be the useful differentiator for a consumer so that they can see that actually this thing is, a, is, a, is, a, is made up of smaller events uh, which are part of a, a program. Um, so you probably want to bundle those together when displaying them. Um, and then the last example is a, a course uh, where you have a, a schedule of events that you've signed up to, um, a, a number of classes, you know, you're expected that um, you'll uh, attend all of those classes to complete the course. So schema.org ha already has um, a pending type uh, called course instance. So that's the course that might be running uh, in the autumn, for example. Um, the individual classes will just describe those as events um, as before. So again, similar to a headline event, it's just a useful way to say this, this is something, this is a grouping of, uh, of events, grouping of things that you uh, uh, will participate in. Uh, does that make sense so far? Okay, so the way that um, the uh, a session series and the scheduled event or a headline event and event will be um, associated together is using um, a property that people are already using, um, which is uh, sub event. So in the, the, dra the new draft spec, there's a section now that talks about these parent child relationships between event. So a headline event in this example, We'll have a sub event of um, in this case different uh, different races in the aquathon. Um, so, uh, what we what we also saying is where we have a um, in spec. We've defined this idea of property inheritance. So where there is a uh, sub event relationship. Um, any, any, any properties of the parent um, will also apply to the child unless the child says something different. Um, so that's very useful in the case of, um, go say, session series. So it's a different example. So this is the Wednesday yoga example. So all of the key things are actually um, on the, the main event and the only thing that's, that's uh, distinguishing um, but the, uh, the individual instances are the start and end, end times. So everything by default will be inherited except for offers. Um, and the reason for that is the, the, what you, the price that you might pay to attend like a full day event is going to be very different to the price that you would pay to take part in one, just one portion of it, you know, just the like, one event in the afternoon. And what we don't want to do is to have um, implementers wrongly suggested to people that they can um, 
uh, well, things like um, attending this, you, you know, you can buy access to just this one class in a course when in fact you have to buy the whole course. Um, or you can, um, you know, uh, a price to uh, pay, you know, the price for a, uh, a yoga session is for the entire series rather than just actually one session, you know, you have to pay every day. So we're, we're taking offers outside of that in, uh, inheritance, apart from in the case of these regular classes where we've said in the definition of scheduled session that it inherits all the information of its parent, including the offers. But for the other examples, you don't include the offers. And in general, for any uh, type of event, if it's got a sub-event relationship, you never inherit the offers. Because um, we think I think that makes it safe. As we add new event types, it means that when we add people start to do booking, um, they aren't accidentally going to offer the wrong prices, sell people the wrong things. Um, there will still be flexibility if you wanted to allow somebody to turn up to an individual class in a course, given the price for doing that, then you can put an offer on the child event. Um, all we're saying is that any you wouldn't automatically inherit any pricing or other information. Um, uh, quick question, does that include then the scenario, kind of the opposite scenario where you can only turn up to the event if you're kind of signed, so for, in that aquathlon scenario perhaps there might be a scenario where you have to kind of sign up to the headline event before you can take part in the sub event? Yeah, so if there's no um, if there's no booking, if there's no offers or booking information associated with the individual events in the program, then the only thing that you could be sold is offers for the full for the full day. So in these cases, it would you would have to explicitly put some pricing or booking information for these things if you want people to be able to buy it kind of piecemeal. The assumption is that you attend the kind of the parent event. The, this is the only difference. The regular class, the scheduled session, is the only thing that's that's changed. Um, and that means that um, we can add new types um, and uh, other people can define new types if they want to and, and consumers can um, uh, hopefully consistently uh, apply that, um, apply those even if they don't know the details of you know, what a new type might, uh, in, might cover. Um, I noticed that each event in a series is, is specified specifically, <coughs> other than sort of an ICAL type of model where it's the first Wednesday of the month or every Tuesday and Friday or, you know, something that would basically say, um, you know, that within this recurring event, there's a rule for how they recur relatively sets of sub-event instances. I um, don't want to uh, get too... Um, so we, we do have that. Um, there's a, um, you can express an event schedule. Mm -hmm. So there's an event schedule property which actually uh, draws on iCal for describing rules for, um, it's, it doesn't support everything that iCal does, but you can define a start and end date for the schedule, how often it repeats, which day, month, day or month it repeats on. Um, and that there's some changes still to go in here around um, uh, just to help kind of generate the individual instances. But the, the kind of scenario you're talking about is, is covered there, I think. So, so you wouldn't specify sub events if you're headlining? So that, um, you, yeah, so you've got basically two ways to, do, to publish schedules. If you want to um, say there are um, say so, uh, for a sailing course, you want to say there are 10 courses, sorry, 10 classes, and you want to individually give the time and date for those classes. Maybe they're at different locations or at slightly different times. You could list those out as 10 sub-events in an array. If they're always going to happen at the same time, same place, same location, you can express that more succinctly by um, providing an event schedule. Um, and if you want to, you could provide both. You know, it's but it's just that we've got that schedule as a way to kind of basically exchange the rule for when people will turn up. 
the, the sub event is also useful um, if, for example, you have to um, cancel an individual event in series, or maybe the time gets rearranged, then you can publish a sub event that adds a status to one of those things in the in the series to say this is now cancelled or it's full or um, it's going to be at a slightly slight different time. So that some of that wording is the thing that I still need to put into the spec this afternoon. Okay. No, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions or feedback on that? So I think uh, to, to summarize it, I think it, it reflects the current usage. Um, most of the, the, the published data that is using sub events is actually, I think, uh, this, what we're now describing as scheduled series, scheduled session. Um, so it kind of, it makes that a bit, a bit clearer and sets some expectations around how sub event will be used. Um, we've tried to aim for a kind of default uh, default set of behavior and safe behavior for consumers to say you know what they should or shouldn't do when they're encountering sub events um, and when it is safe to apply offers in different scenarios um, it gives publishers still some flexibility so it's not a rigid structure we're not rigidly defining these things we're just defining some useful kind of conformance criteria so we can still as, as we were just discussing choose to offer kind of piecemeal attendance at classes or attendance to bits of a you know a festival or the kind of headline event if you so choose so we don't we've chosen not to kind of start to you know define what a class is or define parts of a program we're just defining types for the meaningful things that we can see in the data at the moment um, we may find that there's more of those that we want to add over time um, but we think that this kind of gives us a model to extend so um, people can start to define their own types if they choose using the extension mechanisms in the in the spec um, uh, or we can start to codify um, uh, some of the useful patterns <clears throat> um, the main one I could see coming is the the virtual events um, but uh, that because as I said earlier there's, there's probably like three or four different scenarios that people are describing with virtual events um, which are actually uh, actually quite different use cases you know there are events where you just turn up in the gym and something is being broadcast to you there are events where um, you take part just by leaving your house and you're part of a virtual event that might be running all around the country you know everyone goes for a run on the same day um, or, you know, and there's some other example, uh, variants of those as well. Um, so, you know, things where, you know, you, you take part in a virtual event, but it, you know, at the same time as everyone else, or everyone goes and participates at a location, but at different times, you know, there's a bit of, uh, some work to, to, to do there before we kind of, uh, can make some, uh, clearer recommendations around that. Um, but I think this gives us a kind of model to build on. Um, sorry, somebody going to say something? Um, go on, Nick. I was going to just prompt about the event series thing. But you, might have, you might be about to say that. So. I, I'm, yeah, I'm coming, coming back to that. Um, the other thing that we've done is the, apart from course instance, the, the new types, we've defined them rather than putting them into schema.org. Um, and the reason for doing that is um, it gives us control over the definition of some of these conformance rules. Um, there's quite a lot of debate and discussion in schema.org around adding different types of events uh, at the moment, and they don't seem to have got to a broad consensus. So we wanted to have some clarity for our own purposes. So we're just gonna go ahead and define what's useful for us. Um, <clears throat> but as, as I say, the caveat there is course instance. This seems ready made for what we want to, to use it for. Um, but the, the main issue, well, I think the only issue with it at the moment is that it's pending. So they could decide to throw it out or they could decide to change the definition, which gives us a, a little risk. Um, and I've added a note to that in the draft to say it could change. Um, 
The same is true for uh, what Nick mentioned earlier, which is this uh, event series. So the other thing that they've been considering doing is um, provide, providing ways to group together events uh, to say these are all part of a kind of common series, um, but there's probably nothing really common about them other than you know they're, they're part of that name series. So the example that they lead with here is the Olympic Games. So that's an event series, and then the individual event, like the 2012 London Olympics, uh, is an event in that series. Um, confusingly, it could also be as considered as a series of events in its own right as well. Um, but so um, I haven't got wording in the, we've, Nick and I have discussed this quite a bit. I haven't got wording in the spec around this at the moment, um, other than to say it's available and you could choose to use it. Um, that would bit where I would like to get some feedback on whether people think that this would be useful now or whether we should just signpost to say this is available um, and let's wait and see how people use it before we provide a bit of uh, discussion. Could, could you bring up the issue with the screenshot of um, GoSweat? I should have got them on the call really because Ken might have a thought on that. That might be uh, a way of illustrating what we're talking about. Yeah, okay. You mean the main one? No, 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 sorry, the issue on um, our, our own board. Um, that's right, I should have sent you a link. Modeling spec, uh, it's in the issue about this subject. Uh, that one, yeah. Specific types of event, the bottom of the uh, issue. Yeah, so this is, this is something that has literally only just happened today. So that's why we're kind of, we haven't, um, so, um, what, so what this is trying to solve, and this is a, like a fresh proposal is only like hours old, um, is, uh, this issue in the data, which I don't know how many of you guys have kind of looked at, for example, to get active London activity finder or other activity finders using the open active data. Um, but they have this curious problem where there currently isn't a way to sensibly group things that are basically the same. Um, and when I say the same, you can see here that swim for adults is clearly the same picture, description, title, everything about it's the same. The thing that's changed, that changes between these three examples is the location and the time. And the way it's currently listed within Open Active is it ends up with lots of this going on. So you end up with like a big directory of repeated stuff and you have to wade through and look for the, um, the relevant things you're, you're interested in. Because obviously if you're browsing as a casual consumer, when you decide you don't care about Swim for Adults, you keep going, going through the list to see what else is there uh, rather than, oh, I'm not sure, maybe I want to go to Wembley. Um, so if you scroll down slightly to the next image, um, what um, GoSweat have done, which is very clever actually, and what I've seen in a few other places, um, is they've got this idea of a kind of more broad grouping of the events. So rather than just having those three cards there totally independent, they've grouped them together as one and said, actually, this type of flow yoga, it's the same thing. It just occurs at lots of different places um, and at lots of different times, which is our kind of existing session series that we've just been talking about. Um, and what um, I'm, I'm kind of proposing here is, is when, when the, we're pushing everyone to towards version two, if we can simultaneously be pushing them to, to try and group their events like this, if they have that ability. So I know that for example, in the Gladstone system, they could do that. Um, that might really help people who are trying to display the data because at the moment, if GoSweat wanted to display the data in it from open active in line with their current style, they would have to do it based on kind of guessing what is the, the same events um, by matching the descriptions or matching the names or, uh, other things. Um, whereas if we provide that as a facility, then it means that when we push everyone to upgrade to version two, we actually get this kind of grouping coming out um, where that information is available already in the system. Um, so that's the proposal. I think it sounds good. I guess my uh, lack of technical knowledge may show through here, but um, I guess it's important that that doesn't stop those things being grouped in a different way. So for example, um, if you're searching for vinyasa flow or whatever yoga, then great. This kind of shows you the different places you can do that. 
but you might also be searching by location and you don't want to then if i'm searching by wembley i don't want to see the one coming up in thornton heath which is the other side of london so um i think it's um and and again this is just my i, I don't know how this kind of stuff actually works but um it, it's making sure people can group it by um, it, it can be shown to the user in a way that's grouped that makes sense for them by the things that they're searching for. So if they're searching for what's near me in Wembley, great, it shows by Wembley maybe rather than what's near me, um, what can't, you know, where can I do yoga, for example. They're kind of two different ways of grouping those kind of events. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. And, and it, that's one of the reasons why I was kind of a little bit hesitant or kind of flip-flopping a bit is probably a more accurate reflection of whether to put this in or not um, because we already have a number of ways to roll up events based on things like events that are taking place in the same location events that are organized by the same person or group you know even events that are happening on the same day right there's multiple ways and we don't we've just kind of that's those are all kind of uh, attributes of the event and uh, as a consumer you can choose to kind of group and organize based on any of those things you know another one would be all of the cycling events you know there's there's lots of different ways to fold things up and so what i think what we're discussing is 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 there something else is there another grouping that's otherwise hard to do without introducing something like event series um, so all of the types that you just talked about there the roll-ups are currently possible i suppose this is a a new type of roll-up that isn't currently possible that is quite useful is that is that what you mean yeah I'm, I'm trying to yeah that's what i'm trying to understand is like how what 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 specific problem just adding event series put in place because we've got we've got all of those other roll-ups the other one is um rolling up by the uh, program property where you've got a common brand where you've got you know uh, a brand uh breeze breeze rides yeah, yeah, please rides. Yeah, use your example. So, uh, and that gives a, uh, you know, it's like looking at this example is yoga with Maxine a brand or is Maxine the organizer? And that would be a way to, to, to roll these up without adding event series. Or is there a, is there a something, you know, if, if it's that um, there is an organizer, um, so maybe a Maxine has vinyasa flow yoga and does something else maybe she runs a cycling class right if you if you can only roll up based on maxine you can't you don't have these idea of these two streams of events so having an event series is useful um that's totally right and the, and in in fusion or gll or any of the leisure operators data the challenge we have is the organizer is the is gll the location is the leisure center the activity is yoga um but if you want to talk about something like this which is a specific type of yoga um with a particular description that's common and some maybe pricing or other things that are common between them and some images that are common there's no way of doing that um but it's almost like we've got activity which is like this high level thing and then we've got the granular which is like lots of little flow yogas um and i suppose we don't want the activity list to become every possible type of naming of activities which is one way of solving it but doesn't really solve it because then you can't put images and descriptions and things so one thing was interesting to look look at um i mean we could probably browse go sweat's website to find more examples actually um is uh, that a lot of those descriptions are actually even for zumba really personal so the instructor although they might instruct across several locations they they try to make their description like my yoga class is fun like that's quite personal but like some of them are super like this is what makes me the best Zumba instructor so it's almost like they're they're using this as a bit of a kind of place to advertise themselves as an individual which I guess makes sense because if it was just Zumba then um yeah it removes that kind of level of personalization and detail yeah yeah so I think so I think we could put this in as a as a way to 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 indicate this is this is useful. The fact that they're discussing it for schema.org suggests that there are use cases for it as well. I think what we all, what where we might have to be careful about setting expectations is 
just because you put an event series in doesn't mean that your events are going to get displayed in a certain way. A consumer is free to, you know, reorganize things based on the, their particular needs. Mm. You know, it's not, it's not a way to reflect your web website or your preferred way of doing your kind of branding. Yeah, it seems to be more a way of, of um, packaging up data in a nice, in a nice way, but uh, it's, it's kind of, we need to keep the, the UI, the user interface that people, how people will display that information separate. So I, personally, I'm a, in terms of the event series, I'd, I'd probably just rip out each of the single sessions and I could do a lot more with it, you know, where, whenever we, we choose to use it, but it is handy to have there you know, in terms of saving, you know, data being pushed around. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, that, that's useful feedback. I'll I'll put something in the in the spec about grouping events. Maybe just talk about some of the the different ways that events can be grouped, and then indicate how event series could be used to um, deal with use cases where you've got particular branding or other information that that you need to articulate and share with people. Can Can I just ask then? So earlier when we were talking, you mentioned about dynamic events as well. I think it was Nick. So how would that play into what we've just talked about there or what we've just seen on that spreadsheet? So if you go back to the event series a sec, just to point out the uh, uh, dynamic events. So it, it's subtle, but you can't really see it from this view, but see session series, it says Tuesday at 10 o'clock. So that's actually a recurring event that occurs every Tuesday at 10. And so that would be a, if we were representing this screen in data, that would be a session series with a, a event schedule the event schedule would say Tuesday at 10, uh, starts this week, ends, ends, whatever, whenever it ends. And then invisible on this, but presumably if you click through, you get to it, would be the individual sessions, which is the scheduled session, which are then generated. So that's the 28th of August or the, the others. And so, that, and so that's how you'd suggest that dynamics, uh, dynamic um, events would also be displayed then or, or pushed into the feed? So, I mean, obviously, as we were saying, yeah, display is obviously up to, to people to how they want to display it. Generally speaking, if there's a recurrence of an event, it's usually displayed like this because users find it, well, seem to, from all the different UXs we've seen, seem to find it easier to understand Tuesday at 10 rather than just a list of Tuesdays. Because obviously, if it's every Tuesday, then that's, that's enough information. But, but in terms of how it's displayed in the feed, um, you would in the feed just put event schedule Tuesday 10 within that session series. So you wouldn't necessarily, uh, as Lee said earlier, you wouldn't necessarily list out the scheduled sessions unless one was canceled or one was in a different location or something was, was up. That would be overridden, um, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for the feedback there. So I'm, um, going to make some more revisions to the spec um, and push that out this afternoon. Um, so there will be an updated version of this draft and I'll uh, announce that to the mailing list and everybody else as part of summarizing uh, today's call. Um, so if you uh, have a chance, it would be great to, um, to I'll, I'll pull out some specific section of the spec where I'd like to get feedback, but being up, going through the detailed wording and just giving any comments you have would be really useful so that we, we've got confidence that um, people are happy with um, the changes for 2.0. So there's, there's quite a lot, and we've been talking about them on, on these calls for, for quite some time. Um, we've been trying to ground the changes in what we can see in published data, so we're not being too prescriptive, um, but it's also it's really good to have kind of demonstrable feedback to say that people are both either unhappy with certain things and so we can change them or even just like I am happy with this I've looked at this I'm happy with this is a good way to show that we've got consensus and reassure everyone that we've done um, appropriate kind of review with the community so yeah so we'll be looking for that um, in the next the next two weeks um, uh, so we can actually formally publish that spec um, so our next call is on the 12th of September. So that will be just before um, hopefully we'll hit publish. Um, and if it's anything like the, the call we had for the kind of one book one release, it will just be rattling through 
a list of kind of bug reports uh, or minor changes to the to the spec. Um, the the following call on at the end of September, I've got TBC. Um, I'm actually going to be out of the country that week, um, so I'm trying to decide whether we should just cancel that call um, or reschedule it, or whether somebody else might come in and do a, a guest chairing session. Um, so uh, we'll, I'll do an announcement about that on the list um, in the next week or so. Jade, if you're watching the video, it'd be great to have an activity list session if you're uh, around. Um, okay, so I think we're, we're just coming to the end. Has anybody got anything else they wanted to uh, say or raise on the call today? Uh, so to give feedback, you do it by raising an issue against the uh, thing, do you? Against the uh, spec? Yeah, if you're happy, um, so if you're happy uh, finding an issue on GitHub, then just giving just um, giving me, you know, ideally, you know, this bit I don't agree with, or section headings, so I can make changes. If you're not happy about it on GitHub, then drop me an email, um, and I'll file the issue for you. But um, that that's the best way because it just gives me a task list to work through and lets other people pitch into the discussion as well. So if you go back to that page a sec, Lee, so it's it's literally for anyone else watching this, uh, the new issue button on the right hand side. Um, you just click that. Uh, you don't have to fill all this in. So if you just if you want to just delete all of that and just put as Lee was describing, just simply the section that's an issue. I don't like it. Uh, uh, and yeah, detail. And then you just need to hit the submit button in green after you give it a, a subject heading and go. Um, and to do all of what you've just seen there, you would need to create an account, which is also really easy to do in the top right of the screen. Um, you can click create account, create it under your personal name is the suggestion for GitHub. So just a, rather than an organizational account, just create your name uh, uh, as the username and then um, yeah, use that. And then you'll get any emails and notifications through there as well. Right. Thanks, Nick. Okay. And so are you going through all those issues there as part of the, the sign off for two? Um, not there's quite a lot of issues in the, in the backlog. Some of them are proposals and things for future versions of the spec. Um, on the GitHub projects, um, there's a projects tab, um, and there's a project board, which is what I'm working on um, for this release. So there's different um, different columns here. So um, the, the uh, this one, second from the right in editor's draft, those are all the changes I've got in so far. Um, the changes I need to do this afternoon is put, um, summarize this proposal we've been discussing. There's a few other proposals that are run, under discussion, um, which a couple of these might make it in, but I think, like for example, as I said, routes at the start, um, those will be in a future version of the specification. So I'm using that just to call out things where we've got some active discussion in the community. There's a backlog here, it's currently 24 issues of other things that, um, uh, may go into the specification at some point as well. So that's another way just to kind of get a sense of where we're at in terms of next release. Uh, it's worth saying that anything you put in issues is kind of there for triage. So if you, when, you, when you put them in the top of the issues, um, Lee will be able to, whoever will be able to pull them into this, this backlog. So you're really just shoving them into the issues list. Um, and then the ones particularly, particularly relating to feedback for this will probably just go straight to the front of the queue. I imagine Lee will just push yeah. them through. Okay, right, I'm gonna wind up the call then. So thanks again for everyone for giving up their time and giving some useful feedback. Um, I'll circulate a summary of the call to the mailing list and announce the editor's draft uh, by the end of today. So, uh, speak to you all in a couple of weeks. Thanks, bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks,